there's a there's a bunch of different news articles about this, and I'd like to go into it. And we've talked about it many times on this show. But once again, I will simply state. Nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants it's to work really anymore. Really sad. Nobody wants to work it's anymore. Really sad. And I think the New York Times has um uh, they they finally you know behind the curve as usual. They're talking about the no one wants to work anymore phenomenon. However, uh, their headline is "You quit, I quit, we all quit," and it's not a coincidence. Why the decision hmm. to leave a job can become contagious. Hmm. And um so yeah there there is a there is a, a hey COVID. Still, still a problem. Still around. Bigger problem: the virus of people leaving their job. Yeah. So, how are we going to deal with this? So, this is by Emma Goldberg in the New York Times. It begins like this: Something infectious is spreading through the workforce. Its symptoms present in a spate of two week notices. Its transmission is visible in real time, and few bosses seem to know how to inoculate their staff against this against this quitagion. <laughs> There's just there's no way to stop people from quitting. It's just like no one knows. It catches what can you do? It catches quickly. There's a shock when you see multiple people leaving. It's like, oh, is there something I'm not seeing? said Tiff Chang, twenty seven, who left her job in digital marketing in July, along with five of her close friends in at the forty person agency. Is it my time to leave as well? Quitting rates were high in August, September, and October. Then, according to Labor Department data, they climbed even further. More than 4.5 million people left their jobs voluntarily in November, a record high in two decades of tracking. Damn. Economists explain that the numbers explain the numbers by noting that competition for workers led to better pay and benefits, driving some to seek out new opportunities. Psychologists have an additional expl- explanation. Quitting is contagious. <sighs> it- I'm really sick of psychologists talking to the news. <laughs> They just they never fucking add anything. No. Employers are going to have to start contact tracing <laughs> employees who have con- come down with this sickness and then, you know, like, you know, like uh, like rabies. They should, they need to be destroyed. They need to be put down they immediately. They need to be put down immediately. Yeah. No quarantine, yeah. no contagion. No. So what do the psychologists Is it just like, oh, it's um everyone wants to do it when they see one person. Do they mention that it's like, oh, they're not being paid enough yeah. or they're noticing their job sucks? Is I'm really done with psychologists. I've joined a new religion while I've been out here, <laughs> and yeah, they have some very interesting to say about psychology and its effects on people. Yeah, I don't agree with them on all the other stuff. I believe in an entirely different alien mythos than <laughs> they do. But the, the shit they're saying about psychiatrists and shit, they're spitting. You join you you join the Church of Scientology. And you're like, okay, I agree with the auditing. I I, I agree with all the blackmail. I, I, I definitely agree with about about the psychiatry and industry of death, but I believe in Halo, not yeah, Omar, exactly. not not not, Z, not Zeno. Get Zeno out of here. I believe in the Forerunners, the Covenant. Exactly, all that shit happened. <laughs> it all happened, and like no one. The thing about Halo is they accounted for people being like, oh well, why aren't there like art like why aren't there artifacts? Because we lost the humanity. Um, you know, we lost to the precursors so bad that they're like, we're going to make you cavemen again. And you're not going to remember when you had spaceships. I think that's actually pretty close to what is in Dianetics, or the, the, the Xenu prophecy. Well, the, in, this, in the Xenu deal, they uh, brought a bunch of aliens to Earth and killed them in a... Or, uh, first, they showed them a bunch of scary videos, and then they yeah. nuked them all in volcanoes. And then their ghosts inhabited humans. They made all the aliens watch House of Sand and Fog. Yeah. They're like, Very this is a really movie. tense movie where two people treat each other terribly. <laughs> and the aliens were like, no. <laughs> They'd Please. never seen a tense adult drama. <laughs> uh, going on in the article, it says, so quitting begets more quitting, a challenge that employers can't always solve with raises or perks. Even a single resignation notice can breed a hot spot, said Will Phelps, who teaches mm. management at the University of New South Wales and was an author of a study on turnover contagion. If you teach management, you are like, that is less honorable than professionally getting hit by cars for a living. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If you're jo- like, if you teach management, you, your job might as well be like, I go to big box stores and fall down. <laughs> Uh, the it says here the office has long been a petri dish for infectious behavior, mm. lying, cheating, and job satisfaction all tend to spread from desk to desk. 
Financial advisors, for example, are 37% more likely to commit misconduct if they encounter teammates who have done so. What what researchers refer to as peer effects, noting that one case of misconduct results on average in an additional 0.59 cases. Employees also mimic the nutritional patterns of people they sit with in the cafeteria. Teammates are suggestible to one another in far subtler ways than they realize. Okay, well, okay, so like the contagion spreads in the office, people talking to each other, people noticing what's going on or just, you know, being around other people. Go all remote. Keep everyone separate. Yeah. Keep them keep them in the pod. They're just keep them looking at Zoom and on Slack and then the, the contagion will not spread. You'd think so, but it seems like they really don't want that either. Yeah. It's weird. What what do you want people want? You don't want you you want people in an office so that you can keep the real estate justification like explain why you're paying those fucking leases but you don't want them hanging together i guess you have to create like bulletproof plexiglass cubes for everybody with no ability to hear outside of them i was i've been trying to figure out like why this is such an anti-work from home company like before covid or work from home country because it's like everyone like if you couldn't if you couldn't do your job anywhere but the office, then people's bosses wouldn't fucking bother them as much as they do when they right. know they're home. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess it's just like, that's probably management psychology. You just want to beat people down more. Well, you, you want them justify... to spend less time with their kids and their family and doing things they like. Yeah. And making it so like the only thing that they get any positive brain chemistry from is like doing the widgets correctly. Yeah. Uh, go around here. It says, um, here are some of these strategies that they're going to um, they're going to deal to deal with this phenomenon. So it says for for employers, replacing just one quitter is a straightforward class. I love that they use the word quitter. You quit <laughs> yeah. a job, you're a quitter. You're you, yeah. We, why don't you just stick with something for once? <laughs> you're quitting. You're letting everyone down. Uh, but replacing several or even dozens is far more challenging, and the interim periods tends to leave existing staff with a heavier load, while recruiters field awkward questions about what's fueling all the departures. <laughs> with quitting rates soaring, some executives are wondering how to lift morale. There we go. This okay, here we go. So Seth, uh, Seth uh, Bezmertnik, chief executive of the marketing software company Conductor, had seen his company's turnover rates hover in the low single digits for years. He even worried that his retention was too strong, making it hard to scout new talent. Over the last two years, though, turnover rose into the double digits. Mr. Brismertnik had to get creative in his tactics to keep workers content, including adding new holidays and bringing Broadway actors from Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen (laughs) to sing Mm. Burn and Waving Through a Window for staff during all-company video meetings. Oh, That, I would... Just People keep quitting. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Hamilton will continue until morale improves. <laughs> I mean, like we had a in 2020, we had an all family Zoom Thanksgiving, and I almost quit the family, <laughs> and that was without singing. <laughs> Career coaches, meanwhile, worry that some people are being too easily influenced by the behaviors of their roaming colleagues. Mm. Catherine Minshew, chief executive of The Muse, a job search site, warns clients that a single employee's desire to leave a company shouldn't have too much bearing on the decisions that friends make. When one person announces their resignation, they are us- they are, they are, there are usually some questions from their colleagues and workplace friends, she said. Where are you going? Why are you leaving? That Pied Piper trail won't always lead people to better options. And Miss Minshew advises workers to assess their companies with the hyper-individualized approach that they might take to building relationships. The idea that someone would publish a list of the 50 best people to marry in New York City is silly, she continued. Similarly, I think the best companies to work for is a bit of a silly idea. So yeah, like, no, that, that, that is a silly idea. All companies suck to work for. That's true. They're bad. Um, however, okay, this, this is a good idea. So for employers... Like, you know, like they should do their own version of the shitty media men list <laughs> or or like, you know, the, the West End Caleb saga or like, you know, like bad men don't do it. They love bomb. They ghost. <laughs> so like the, 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 the worst employee list. Yeah. And these are people who, you know, um, talk to their coworkers about their salary, um, who complain, who, uh, you know, take sick days. And then who, they should have a list of people who leave jobs. A blacklist. Yeah, bl- that, a that blacklist. Ex- that yeah. has mm-hmm. existed uh, all throughout a uh, n- number of industries. Usually it's people who try to start unions. But now it can be just people who uh, who express even mild dissatisfaction with their jobs. 
or have too many mini muffins in the pantry or whatever. <laughs> You're killing the the morale. You're taking all the mini muffins. Everyone's going to quit now. Um, it says, uh, but logical career advice can't always prevent the contagion from catching. There's a little bit of a take this job and shove it feeling, mm. Ms. Wells said. If you're in a company where all the people start leaving, you're like, why am I the last one sitting here? Uh, the, yeah, it says, um, that is the, uh, the, that's the end of the article. I'm just going to I'm just going to like word search this article for the word wage. Mm -hmm. Okay, wages. That's zero out of zero. I'm just going to look salary. That's zero out of zero. I'm just going to Google. I'm just going to word search money. No. But no. mm. this is a waste of time. Okay, that, that, none of those words appear even once in this article. Why should it? This is telling you this. The whole thesis here is that quitting is essentially like uh, herpes. And when somebody has it, they'll never lose it. And they're going to spread it to their coworkers. And there's apparently no cure. Okay. The phrase noting that competition for workers led to better pay and benefits driving others to seek out new opportunities. That's the only mention of yeah. better pay and benefits. But like in this context, benefits also means you can see a cast member from Dear Evan yes. Hansen sing looking through a window to you over Zoom. I got to say, if it was, if it's the guy, because I never, I had no idea what the fuck that was before the movie came out. I, I knew it was a play, but that's all I knew. And then I saw the commercials for the movie and the horrifying demonic man who plays the high schooler uh his face was so unnerving that if i saw it on my zoom uh i would have to quit immediately oh is that the one where um it's about like a boy who he commits suicide and some other boy like assumes his identity but the yeah the guy who plays him is like 48 he's a 48 year old whose dad produced the play damn <laughs> or produced the film rather it's pretty funny yeah, it's something like that. It's some fucking uh, talented Mr. Ripley stuff with music, and I don't want it. I don't want to see that on my Zoom calls. See, like I would see ads for it on TV all the time. It's like the musical of the year, and then I was absolutely astonished when I found out it's not about AIDS. It did have that vibe, yeah. Um, we I, should bring back musicals about that. I mean, I know it's like, you know, prep has been great for everyone, and it's not the '80s anymore, but like. You know, they made like four, five, six great musicals about it. That's true. You There's got that, Rent, yep. Angels in America, mm -hmm. all the other ones. Um, AIDS with exclamation point. Yeah, that's that's half one. of them. That's half of six. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. There's a disease in Les Miserables. We're there. We're there. That's like five. Okay, so that, that, that that's from the one perspective on this issue. The, the next article is from Slate. And this is sort of like, um, uh, this is here, uh, the headline is, companies are desperate for workers. Why aren't they doing the one thing that will attract them? Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. And it goes, if you believe reports from employers, they're desperate to find good workers, but can't lure them at any price. Talk to job seekers, though, or existing employees at those same companies, and you'll hear a different story. So this is the other perspective to the quit Tajan about what's going on here. From job seekers' perspectives, companies do have plenty of vacancies, but they haven't adjusted to the massive sea change the job market has undergone in the past two years. They're offering laughably low salaries, although candidates can command far more, or requiring years of experience for entry-level jobs, and they're still operating on a model of underpaying and overworking at a time when workers have much better options. Hmm. These accounts are pretty typical of what I'm hearing from job seekers, as well as from employees at companies that say they're having trouble hiring. So here's just a bunch of like, these are these are these are firsthand accounts here. So let's just a few examples of what's going on. I now. don't know, man. I'm still thinking it's psychology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the classic psychology doing it. So the first one here says, "I've lost count of the job ads I've seen that want five to eight years of experience in a fairly unique field, but are only paying seventeen to eighteen dollars an hour in a high cost of living areas and where the job is in person. I imagine the employers think." that this is a good pay rate, but it really is insulting. It's not very good. It's lower than the minimum wage would be if it had been if it had risen at the rate it had until the, the mid-60s. It's that anything lower than, like, I think 22 or something like that is lower than what a, a uh, properly adjusted minimum wage would be. So, yes, that is a shitty fucking wage. So imagine, like, adjusted for, like, inflation and cost of living and just productivity, like, over the yeah, last oh, 40 well, years. If you do productivity, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah. get out of here. Um, seventeen to eighteen dollars an hour is you are making 
minimum wage right. and are required to demonstrate five to eight years of experience in the field that you were applying for. Yeah. Uh, next one here is, my employer is absolutely desperate for another key staff member, but doesn't want to give any more than a week vacation. Won't budge at all. It's incredibly a short-sighted. Week <laughs> a week vacation? A for a whole year. You got a week off. A week vacation, man. Just like this, okay. is the, this really is the no fun country. It's insane. <laughs> and this it's is like, insane. <laughs> you were talking earlier about uh, if France leaves NATO. Like France is like for the, all the shit they get from Americans. Like they're like, oh, you put cheese eating surrender monkeys. Like we are such pussies compared to the French. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. if, if, if they get any job in like the French economy, if like an employer was just like, yeah, um, you have to take like in one weekend in August because you come into the office, every car in Paris would be on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Like we will, uh, the, we will come to your house and drop kick you through your fucking front window if you tell us that we have to come in for an extra half an hour a month. If somebody in France proposed Boss's Day, they would be flayed alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one. I recently went through a job search and it was interesting. I received an offer from every interview. One actually called while I was on the way home. What some employers were offering is still laughable, though. One healthcare agency that involved direct contact with medically vulnerable patients boasted in the interview that they encouraged taking time off and promoting a healthy work-life balance. Their PTO benefits were seven days off a year, <laughs> which included both vacation and sick time with no COVID-related sick time allowance. <laughs> Unbelievable. Awesome. Last I saw, they still had a, the job ad up marked as urgently hiring. Yeah. Not it's that urgent. Psychology, <laughs> psychology at work once again. Mm. The psychology of not wanting to work every fucking day in a COVID hole. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to be pretty obvious. Like there, there are things they they could do to fill yeah. these these. It was like offer more than a week of vacation and yeah. don't pay minimum wage. Yeah. Um, okay. Next one. In my industry, biotech, specifically cell therapy, I keep hearing and seeing that there is a desperate need for trained employees. I know that in my department, we've been trying to hire some specialized positions forever, and at least some interviews have happened. But the interviewees turn down jobs because we're not paying anything like what our closest job type and physically, physically competitor is paying. Since everyone in our department knows this, no one I've talked to seems to know why we aren't offering market rate. There there's, because there's a guy uh, in, in like... Connecticut in a s swimming pool full of doubloons <laughs> and he doesn't want to get rid of them. Next one. Uh, we are hemorrhaging talent, both salaried and production factory workers and can't find and hire qualified applicants who will work for what previous employees are making. We're going months without filling positions, mostly because our HR VP believes that we're all overpaid. The market believes otherwise. I wonder who will win. <laughs> I mean, well, surely the market, right? This is, the market forces, I mean, this is just a rational way of determining the value of someone's right. labor. Yeah, it, it really is like, a, it's like a wrestling match. Labor, labor and capital wrestling out in, on the, on the, the, in the squared circle of the free market. And then there's the ref who occasionally will just take out a, a folding chair and hit uh, labor in the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, goes on here, it says, at the same time that companies are failing to offer competitive salaries, many of them are overstuffing the job, des job descriptions well beyond what's realistic. All right, this is the next one. My organization is, quote, struggling to fill a role, complaining about how they can't find anyone qualified. And when they do find someone somewhat qualified, they get turned down. Well, no kidding. The position is a combination of two very different jobs. So good luck to find someone with several years of commercial land transaction experience and a volunteer management experience. Oh, you want to pay this experienced person who has to do two, two very different jobs and report to two different supervisors, peanuts? No wonder they've been trying to hire this position since July. I mean, this is like, like the, the, the job descriptions that there's like, the, what, what these firsthand accounts are like, seem to be like more like the, like the the white collar version of those like things that are posted on like the like doors and windows of restaurants now. Yeah, they're like literally saying like uh, you know sorry sorry for the lack of service, but no one wants to work anymore. Not mm -hmm. even at fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, and it's like have you tried twenty jackass? Have you tried twenty five? <laughs> have you tried thirty? Because the market has spoken. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. I mean, my my. I, my guess is that this all ends with a, a, a like an interest rate whip crack that uh, gets the gets all these hogs back in the line and yes. basically an enforced recession. Yeah, they're doing this summoning circle for Volcker lately. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, next one. In my field, I'm seeing a ton of postings for jobs over the last month or so, and I've had multiple recruiters contact me just this week. But the job descriptions are wildly demanding, even more so than pre-pandemic. So many very specific skills that you'd be very likely to find in one person. I had a client rant to me recently about how they weren't getting good candidates for their positions. I suggested that they consider focusing the job description a bit more on the skills they most want. And he got really defensive and just said again how much they needed all the work done. Then you have to pay for it. <laughs> there is just an utter disbelief that they no longer hold 100% of the cards. Yeah. No, they're, 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 it's just not computing. Their brains, because the the algorithm is not, uh, it does not factor in any kind of worker uh, autonomy, it, it, and so, uh, yeah, they're 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 not going to change it. That's for sure. Well, I mean, like it, it just like not of their own volition. The the, the, the the employer mindset here, like it, whether whether it's someone who was working like uh, like like a like a service job or a more like white collar, you know, uh, like you know, the knowledge, email job, yeah, marketing Clicking consulting, clap, like yeah. shit like that. Um, it just seems to me that, like whether it's a, a wage or a salary, employers just think that giving someone a job is like a favor to them. Oh yeah, and then like if you have a job, you should just be great. It's just a like hiring someone is a huge and they like and then turning down that favor is like spitting in their face or whatever. One of my favorite moments from the 2016 campaign is somebody asked uh, Trump when he was in the middle of doing his uh, an insane Bobby Heenan like trolling of dead troop families. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and somebody interviewed him and like you know uh, the, the Khan family has, has pointed out that their, fa their uh, family sacrificed for this country what, what sacrifices have you uh, it had and he goes I employ thousands of people I give them money and I give them health care it's like he, he literally imagines his job of of extracting surplus value from people as a as a, a genuine sacrifice of his own money that he would have otherwise as if they're doing the job isn't the reason he has the money to give them in the first place. <laughs> and yes, that is exactly how they all think. Okay. Okay, sharks. Here's my idea. <laughs> Labor costs. Too they're high. going up. Em employees. They're, they're, they're getting uppity. They're getting saucy. They're, they're getting <laughs> saucy. They, they act like, you know, they, like they're, 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 they're taking more and more of my hard-earned money away from me. It's not good. Okay. They're, getting, mm. they're getting all kinds of psychology. Sh mm. <laughs> sharks, what if I could tell you, for a relatively smaller investment, and food and housing, you could have employees that would literally can't leave. Mm. Sharks, mm. it's called slavery. Okay, now we're mm. talking. <laughs> you literally own your employees. They were they have to work for you. They're your property. They, they're like it's it's like you you own your factory equipment. You own the office space. What if you own the people in the office as well? I would never have to hire the cast of Hamilton to sing for them. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could save that money and have them come just to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if there was like. Like like modern like white collar slavery, employers would still do Zoom calls with Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen. They absolutely like, would. Look, I'm the I'm the good employee I'm the owner. Good slave I'm, owner. Like like you know like in in, in in like like bad employee owners, they yeah. never have Zoom calls with Dear no, Evan Hansen. Not at all. You, you know? should be like, thankful that you're working. Like, I, at my, I feed them nutritious. Yeah. I, I feed them nutrient bowls. Yeah. Some people just feed them slop. Yeah. Like Some the, people bad unnutritious. You're food. so lucky you're here. We get sweet green every fucking Friday. You go across the street that they have a. Uh, hamster feeder of Soylent <laughs> in the middle of the office, and that's all you get. I think you're right that this will end with just like Volker time, but um, if it doesn't, I could see in every state that we are about to go on tour in that they're going to pass a law that says that you can just impress prisoners, not even like people who are in state prison, like people who are like in jail. Yeah. You can make them work at your company. Yeah, the old anti uh, the the South had after the Civil War uh, anti uh, vagrancy and loitering laws, uh, where if you were just walking down the street and you didn't tell have anywhere to go, it's like, all right, you're uh, you're building this fence now. That's your job. That's what you're doing. <laughs> they actually they actually tricked thousands of people to painting fences because one kid told them it was super fun. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what they should do. Hire a few key influencers <laughs> to start being like, work is dope. Yeah. And start doing TikToks about how much fun they have, like filling out expense reports. Yo, yo, dead ass. I'm 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 merching on all the boys. You're painting this fence is fire. Um, it goes here. Uh, the resistance to adapting to new conditions seems to lie at the heart of what's happening in the market. 
employees employers are still operating like they did a decade ago without considering how they might need to change to raise offers, increase benefits, and generally make themselves a more attractive place to work. They're also not approaching their hiring process with the seriousness or urgency that this market demands, as this person pointed out. What I'm hearing about the job market doesn't match with what I'm actually seeing. I'm hearing, we'd hire anyone with a pulse and, a ha and half of your experience. I'm hearing, please apply. I could use someone like you. I'm hearing, you're a great fit from the, for this role from the recruiter. What I'm seeing is I apply into a black hole. I'm being told to reach out to people who never get back to me. I'm seeing desperate companies take a lot of time to think about it. I'm seeing people get to the final round of interviews and suddenly be disqualified for something that, according to the company, should have disqualified them when they first spoke to the recruiter. Seriously, a friend went to a final interview after getting extremely good feedback from his internal recruiter on every prior step in what I think was a four-part interview. Okay, I'm oh just going to pause here. God. If you have to interview for a job more than twice, twice. they should pay you for the third time. Yeah. Or Absolutely. Third or fourth time. That's a lot yeah. of time. Any just just yeah. like a stipend or whatever. Just like a $50 yeah. in cash. Like, just something. A four-part interview. Jesus Christ. Only to be told that the company was looking for entirely different skills for the role. Think interviewing in French and then being told the job requires Japanese. You'd think they'd have figured that out much sooner in the process. It sounds like the human resources departments don't want to work anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, no, that's the thing. Like all middle management, they're all stupid. They're yeah. all fucking stupid. They're all stupid because like they've been, I mean, being an employer post NAFTA really, really post the entire 1980s, but especially post NAFTA is like, you're playing t-ball yeah and now you're just playing softball they're still throwing it underhand <laughs> and you're like you this, just what, this isn't fair it's like wait a minute what it's moving yeah <laughs> you told me this would happen and they're they're just not they're, they're not up for it no. they're really not up for anything <laughs> you got you get brushed off the plate with an underhand softball pitch <laughs> and you're like ow <laughs> ow i've got brain damage <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, like, and it's funny, like, in especially in like service jobs, like, like you know, like I was saying earlier, the flyers that like, sorry, sorry, sorry that the jalapeno poppers aren't on the menu, but no one wants to work anymore. There is nobody on the planet who hates working and wants money for free more than restaurant owners and people in <laughs> HR departments, more, more than anyone who like are employers. Yeah, they hate working. Yeah, of course. they really don't like it. Yeah. And they want, and what do they want? They want all the money, all the fucking money possible for yep. doing as little as possible. Yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, like, that's that's what everyone wants. Right, exactly. But they feel entitled to it's it. It's almost like there's an adversarial relationship between